The last day in June is past, so here are all the games I completed in June. So the very first game that I completed in June is Arise, A Simple Story. This is a game that is a narrative game where you have puzzles and it's an environmental puzzle type of game to make the next part of the scene trigger. You are guiding a man who is in the afterlife and you see all of his memories. And the fun thing about this is there is no dialogue. So basically you're hearing and seeing everything through sounds, nature, and you're seeing his expressions. So you don't need dialogue. You know exactly what's going on and what's happening throughout each part of the scenes. This is a fun game. Michael, thank you for recommending this game. It is a game that I'm happy that I streamed. If you are not certain about it, it goes on sale every now and then, so you definitely can pick it up at that time. And I got it on the Switch, and I had a good time with that game to the point where I got all the achievements. Definitely a fun time. Try it. Then is a port of a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game, Wrath of Mutants. This is a game that was in the arcades back in like 2019. And it's about an hour gameplay. It's not that long. So if you want to have a sit down, play one time kind of game, this is definitely up your alley. I enjoyed it. Uh, a lot of people didn't like it, but for some reason I did not hate it. It was a good game. Uh, I will say it's not the best Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game. It's not a great beat em up, but it's a good beat em up. Definitely worth your time if you like TMNT. I know I streamed this and had a blast with it, so if you are down to have like four people with you, definitely worth your time. Uh, I will say though, it's on the easier side. Definitely a game where you can finish and not have to worry about it. After that, I played a game called Guardian Heroes. This is a game that is a hack and slash beat em up. It's a 2D side scroller style and it's got RPG elements. This is a fun game and this is based off a cartoon. This was released on the Saturn and then I found it on the Xbox 360 store and it was really cheap. It was a good game. Uh, definitely worth your time. It's one of those games where it's a hidden hideaway kind of game that not many people know about or they hear about and then it goes, oh, and explodes. It is a good game. I had a fun time with it. It definitely is up my alley. I like beat em ups. I like hack and slash games. This was a game that it had a funny dialogue to it where it's basically you're a group of people that same as always you have to stop an evil person but you get like this weird creature like it's a necromancy kind of thing where you have control of him and you can make him do whatever you want to do. The cool thing about this is you could hop from one part of the plane to the back to the other so like you're hopping into like like zones basically and you can knock people out and move on and jump back and forth. So, fun game, definitely get it. It was super cheap, it was like five bucks. I, I'm so happy that I found it in the store. Then I played a game called Jossant. I'm not sure if I'm saying it correctly. If you speak French, please help me out. This is a donut game and it is basically a platformer kind of game where you are a young guy and you are having a little companion. The, cat, the companion is so cute. And basically you are climbing to try to figure out how to get to the next part so you have to look around and figure out like which is the best path to take it's a really simple game um, it does have a story but it, it's one of those kind of stories again that has no dialogue you just see the story play out and at the very end it does a weird twist kind of turn it goes from like an adventure game of like let's get to the top of the mountain to we have to save some creatures so if you played the game you know what i'm talking about but i liked it it was a good time i don't know if i would pay full price for this game sadly i know it's even cheaper than normal like it wasn't 70 dollars, but i don't think i would have paid full price even then for this game i got it on game pass so i don't know it, let me know. Did you like the game? Did you play it? Was it worth your time? I, I, I was 50-50 about it. I mean, it's a good game, but I don't think I would have bought it. Then I played a fighting game called Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle. This is like Tekken Tag. It's really fun. It has uh, Ruby and Persona characters and there's like a bunch of characters from all these games put together and you can play either storyline. I did the Blaze Blue storyline for the story mode and I enjoyed it. It was a fun fighter. Uh, if you are debating about it, definitely try it out. I know it was on Game Pass. Uh, I don't know if it's still on Game Pass as we talk about it right now, 
but I had a good time with this game. It's a fighter I recommend. If you're not sure about which storyline to pick, just go with ones that you know for sure because they're all going to be in there. Like if you do the Blaze Blues, you're going to see Persona and Ruby and the other storyline care. I can't remember the last one. If you let me know in the comments below, I'll be like, oh crap, why did I forget about that one? But it was fun. I enjoyed it. It's definitely a fighter that you will like. I had played Battlefield 3, Bad Company 1 and 2, and I missed out on Battlefield 4, so I went to it right now. And basically, Battlefield 4, you're playing as Wrecker, and you're with a team, and you're trying to stop China and Russia. And in this one, you're trying to stop, like, evil terrorist groups that are battling each other, and you're just stuck in the middle, and then you have to save one of your your teams that are in a ship somewhere and basically it's kind of like any other comp campaign that I've had for Battlefield but I did enjoy this one. This one was one of my favorite ones. I like this more than three. Basically you start off and then eventually you become a prisoner of war and I really liked the storyline. There was people in there you didn't know if you could trust them because technically they were part of the other side at one time and so you're debating about is your team trustworthy throughout the whole time and that part I liked because you couldn't tell if you should help them or not but you have to because it's part of the storyline but you're like is this person gonna sabotage me later on and you work your way through and you help people along the way that are also prisoners and you eventually get out and you go back to saving your team again so I recommend this one it's definitely a good one. Then I streamed a game called Tomi, A Photo Adventure. This is a photography game that you are a little creature and your mission is to get to the top of the mountain, kind of like a simple tale, kind of like simple life kind of game where you basically just take photos and you work your way to the top of the mountain and you want to see an event called the Northern Lights, they're Tomi, and you have to take photos and earn stamps and go to the bus stop and ask, hey, can I get a bus pass to the next part of the adventure? And you're working your way through your map and the bus guy is like, yeah, you got enough stamps. Here you go, stamps your card and you go to the next part. And I laughed and me and the chat were like, okay, video game logic because the bus goes everywhere in water, <laughs> in the mountains, it just flies. It doesn't matter where it's at. The bus is gonna get you where it needs to go. And I had a great time with this game. It's a sit down, one time story, you know, great you're gonna have fun with this and it's about a three four hour game if you know what you're doing probably can knock it down a couple hours but worth your time it's a cute game i recommend then i played a game that i wanted to play but i didn't want to pay full price for it as well and that's madden 23 madden 23 is the tribute edition of all the madden games because sadly madden had passed away that year and they wanted to give you a tribute. So when you play the game, you get to see Madden as a coach from when he was younger and Madden when he's probably in the 90s, early 2000s. And you get to play different teams and I enjoyed that part. And then you are going to have career mode where you are a young guy who is out of you know college and you have to pick a team. I went with Colts because they gave the best offer and I was going to be starting for that one. I didn't choose any other team. I know Broncos didn't give me a great offer. Sorry. And basically I worked my way through and I got the championship. So hurrah, I got the championship on that one. Next, I streamed and played Hi-Fi Rush. This is a rhythm game that's a hack and slash with parry system. You basically are going to the beat of the game and you have the songs playing. I love that they had streamer mode. So if you didn't have a, you know, a game playing while you're streaming, that's going to take your stream out. I thank you to any game developer who does that. I appreciate that where you have a streamer mode. So you're not getting, you know, flagged and, and your stream getting taken down. I, I that that's an A plus for me. So basically you are a young kid who is given an arm because something goes on. You have an injury that's really bad. And for some weird reason, you have an MP3 player that gets stuck in your chest and they call you a defect because that's an old outdated you know software and you can't have it but it's yours and you don't want to be taken out because of that defect so you have to fight your way through and then you find other people along the way that are not happy with the system either the government so you they help you and you have to fight your way through to get rid of all the guys that are in there 
that are trying to knock you out. And I had fun with the bosses. The bosses were hilarious. And I do enjoy the game and like it, but I just, I'm horrible at the parrying. So that was a, like a little bit of an eh to me. And I do thank you again, developers, for making it to where you don't die if you don't do that correctly. I mean, yes, for the parrying system, they made you have to do it, but this was okay with my, my book. It was fine. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Then I played a game called Venba. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm saying it correctly again. If, if I'm saying it incorrectly, I'm, my apologies. This is a cooking game with a narrative story to it and basically you are a young couple who are working your way from India to Canada and you have to cook dishes to help out and you are trying to look for work so you're helping your husband and stuff like that. And then you have a kid and you watch the kid grow up and the kid does not like the culture or want to be in the culture because he wants to be Canadian. so. He stops speaking their native tongue in the house and then eventually you see him grow up and you realize he realizes that he should have you know learned more about the culture and he also is wanting to cook with his mom again so you get to see that dynamic of him from young to old and also her working her way through and trying to get a job and stuff like that so i enjoy the game i liked it i will say it is a game that again thank you developers if you don't get it correct, you don't stop. It's only when you do a couple of mess ups that it's like, eh, this doesn't look right. So if you mess up once, you're okay. So just look at the recipe book. It's in a different language in some parts, but you kind of get the gist of it because you can talk to them and stuff like that. And this one, I 100%ed the achievements because it's a story game. You can't perish in it. So I wanted to get that done. So yeah. 100% achievements for this whenever I have a story driven game I do that for sure then a game that I have been trying to finish for 20 plus years I started this game when I was younger I don't remember when I started wanting to beat this game and this is a game that it's only four levels but it's so difficult you can be bounced around by multiple enemies and that is the karate kid I've been trying to finish this game for years because I start it and then I put it down because I get frustrated and then I start again and I get frustrated. But this, I, you know that moment of like, hey, maybe today's the day. So you open up the system, pop it in and try to get the game done. And I finally did. So I learned a lot from the stream. So thank you, chat, everybody who helped me out that if you have the enemies behind you all the time, there's no enemies that will spawn in. They can only, uh, like, I guess capacity wise can only have two at a time and then I also got to the very end and nobody showed me this I learned this the hard way that if you crane kick him at the edge he just falls out and he gets back all of his life I was like crap <laughs> I was like I'm just gonna knock him off the platform but you have to have him in the middle because if he goes back you push her out of the way too <laughs> and she goes and falls and I'm like that was so frustrating I got to the end and I'm like oh I did it I got it I'm gonna knock him out and then I pushed him like on accident and I kept pushing him because I'm like I'll just kick him kick him kick him and she fell over that was so devastating because I like I, I screamed and I yelled I was like shit <laughs> I kept trying again and again and again and I finally got it I kept him in the middle of the platform I just crane kicked him I built up a lot of crane kicks because that is also the thing so you could stay in the middle and not move them around build up your crane kicks and, and that actually was a really great run because I got all, I caught all the flies with the chopsticks. I was like, whoa, I've never caught every single fly and got bonuses and stuff like that. So I got a, a punch and a kick. Like it was like three kicks and one punch. I was like, oh my gosh, I've never got that many before. So like kudos to me because that helped me out just collecting all those crane kicks. So this one's off the beat list. This one is off the, the backlog. I'm just ecstatic about this one so definitely gonna keep this for sure for the rest of my life and the very last game um this one is hard to explain um so this is sword and fairy together forever it's an rpg that is based out of china and they localized it and basically it's known everywhere else as sword and fairy 7 or like something like there's a couple names that they have given it and pretty much the story is you are a young girl and I forget the name, um, it is, or yay, or something like that, and she is in the forest, and she finds uh, some fruit, a, a green apple, and she eats it, but 
something happens where she has to stop because like her little companion creature goes no don't eat it and all of a sudden this guy appears the following same night and he's like you hurt me and she's like what are you talking about like i didn't hurt you and he goes like right here and he has like a bite mark on his neck and she's like oh crap <laughs> the guy bit the apple and i didn't bite anybody like oh my gosh so they're stuck together that's why the title is together forever because apparently if you eat strange fruit that is glowing it turns out to be a human or a, a spirit of a person and he's in the spirit world and he comes to the earth <laughs> and so the story also is a little bit confusing too because you have like elements of this demon king trying to come through and multiple like evil spirits trying to come through but then you find out that some of them are trying to do good and the epic battle is because i don't want to spoil it if you ever play it is really difficult um the one thing that i found so frustrating is the glitches this is a glitch fest this was so sad because i was trying to finish this game and basically what happened was most of the bosses were long and tedious battles where you had to like figure out what pattern they were having or you had to figure out how to like knock the creature out or the person out and what irritated me was, okay, so there's a spirit boss, and the spirit boss is a glowing orb, and it has, like, it looks like Saturn with rings and everything like that, and pretty much you have to get poison for your arrows, and you have to knock the poison into the center, and once it turns purple, the spirit orb thing is able to be attacked, and so you go in, you knock its defense down, and you just spam arrows as fast as you can, and you try to get it down but it regenerates health and so i was really pissed off about this because it would get to a certain point where it was like half health and it goes underwater and it pops back up and then it shoots like a bunch of water at you but there's at certain points of the time where it would just disappear it would go underwater and it would i would hear it go back up but i would not see it and i'm like what the hell's going on like why is it disappearing it's, I, I took like an hour to get to this point because it's so tedious and it's so time consuming. And it just frustrated me to the point where I was like, I'm, I'm going to rage quit this game. So I, I uninstalled it, installed it back in. I tried again. Same thing. It deleted itself. It I could hear the sound effect. I could hear the, the creature thing swirling around, but I couldn't see it. And I was like, maybe it's on the walls maybe it's somewhere else no it's just disappeared it's a glitch and i was just so irritated and i almost didn't finish this game because it was leaving at the very last day of june and i was like i'm i'm getting close to the end of the month and i'm not gonna be able to finish this and so thankfully i tried one more time i was like i'm gonna uninstall and install the game again and i'm gonna try one more time and because I started streaming it. Like, I was streaming it off of cloud. And I was like, oh, this, this game sucks. Like, it's not good for streaming on cloud. And then, even installing it still didn't work. Like, I'm uh, installing it, installing it. Like, this game is so bad with its glitches that I cannot recommend it. I mean, if you want to play it and have a good time, yeah, for sure. But a lot of people, when they, they, they played it, they said that they, did, they were not enjoying the story either. And I'm a person that I've watched tons of movies and watched with subtitles. And the frustrating part was multiple characters were talking at the same time as you're battling. So you're missing good chunks of the story as you're playing the game. So yeah, it's an okay story. It's it's good. It's just the glitches made me not happy with this game. I was disappointed. So yeah. Sorry that the RPG that a lot of people love... I had a horrible experience with so I finished it just because I spent almost 20 plus hours playing this game and I was like I'm so I'm so pissed I'm so pissed I want to be done with this game if I ever play it again I will definitely have like the PlayStation 5 version maybe maybe it's better on that because I saw that they sold like a collector's edition so yeah don't play it on Xbox not good on that one and there you have it, everybody. I finished 12 games, so I'm at 58 in total for the year so far. Let me know, how was your June? Did you have any games that were interesting or something that you want me to check out? I will catch you next time. Bye, everybody. Hit the like before you roll out, and I'll see you next video. Peace. Live.
Linda the Gamer Gal. She's here, she's playing games. Linda the Gamer Gal. She's here, she's playing.